Good morning. Welcome back to our Sunday School lessons. This is your Sunday School recap for the last Sunday in October. We're in the Gospel of Mark, studying your faith in action. Sunday Silly. As if 2020 hasn't been bad enough, there's a new strain of head lice going around. It really has scientists scratching their heads. Boom. We're in Mark chapter 2. We're looking at verses 23 through 28. How Jesus, the Son of Man, is Lord even over the most sacred Sabbath. So let's watch our Lumo video for today. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and as his disciples walked along, they began to pick some heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? He answered, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need? In the days of Abiathar the high priest, he entered the house of God and ate the consecrated bread, which is lawful only for priests to eat, and he also gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Okay, here's your warm-up lap. Just some preliminary information. Remember, this is uh, the theme is conflict for these stories in Mark chapter 2 and 3. This is the fourth conflict story in a series of five. Mark is explaining to his Roman readers why the religious authorities hated Jesus enough to kill him. The issue this time is Sabbath-breaking breaking the Sabbath. Judaism had two main practices that set them apart from all other religions. First was the circumcision, and second was the Sabbath, keeping the Sabbath. They were both very sacred traditions. So we begin in verse 23. One Sabbath, he, Jesus, was going through the grain fields. Now, Romans built major roads from city to city, uh, but to cross much of the countryside, one had to traverse the fields. And there were simple dirt paths that separated the fields, and it's likely on one of those paths that the disciples were walk walking, not a major road. So trespassing is not the issue, neither is plucking grain by hand from the stalks, the issue is that it's the Sabbath, Saturday, which was a very sacred tradition, dating back all the way to the time of Moses and before, actually. Um, so as they made their way, verse 23, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. Plucking grain from someone else's field, as long as you didn't use a sickle, was permitted. It was allowed in the law. As long as you weren't harvesting for profit, if you were just harvesting, and it's not really harvesting, you're just plucking a few heads of grain for a snack on the road. And the disciples are hungry, Matthew 12, verse 1 says, and they need a snack on the road, just like I was saying. And Luke adds that they were taking the grain heads and rubbing them in their hands, to rub off all the, the stuff you would want to eat and have just grain left behind. So like I said, they're not harvesting for profit, which was illegal from someone else's field, 
they're just grabbing a few heads of grain to eat. They didn't have mavericks or, or uh, you know, your, your flying jay where you can get some snacks on the road. So that was allowable by law. And the Pharisees were saying to him, to Jesus, Look! Why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? Verse 24. And that's my condescending voice. So the Pharisees use this as another opportunity to attack Jesus. They're really attacking Jesus, although it's about, the, or the, it's about his disciples. The Pharisees are really accusing Jesus. Uh, he's the teacher. He's the master. And they're violating the Sabbath. That's the commandment. It's not a question looking for information. It's a question of accusation. And you may know that work was prohibited on the Sabbath. The fourth commandment, I believe, in Exodus chapter 20, verse 8, says you're to honor the Sabbath. And that is expanded in many of the other laws uh, of the Old Testament. You're not supposed to do work. You're supposed to have that day as a day of rest. Now, part of the conflict is interpretation over what constituted work. What is work and what is rest? The Pharisees had a very strict interpretation of the Sabbath. Let me give you some examples here. These were all prohibited things on the Sabbath. Prohibited Sabbath work. Bathing. Lighting or extinguishing candles. Killing of insects was considered work. Tying and untying the knots. Doing laundry. Moving furniture in your house. Boiling an egg. Carrying pens or, or books. Or really anything uh, heavier than I think a dried fig. Treating sick people unless you were preserving life was against the law. Looking in a mirror, ladies... Uh, was against the Sabbath because women would be tempted to pluck out a gray hair. So that's, you know, they, that was considered work. Further prohibitions. If you toss something in the air, you had to catch it with the same hand. Otherwise, it was work. If you caught it with the other hand, it was work. Traveling more than 3,000 feet from home or 1,999 steps was illegal. The carrying of children, or helping animals give birth, or pulling them out of a hole if they fell in. There are no less than 24 chapters of the Talmud, the, the Jewish rabbinical tradition writings, focused on st Sabbath restrictions. This is a great example of what we like to do as mankind. God gave us, he gave us the Ten Commandments, the Jews focus on that one commandment, one commandment, 24 chapters. I mean, is that not our American law code? It's crazy. We love our laws, and we love breaking laws. Verse 25, and he said to them, this is Jesus' response, have you never read what David did? So he responds with a rhetorical question of his own. He knows they've read the story. They're hypocrites. He's drawing their attention to the hypocrisy. This is my paraphrase. Hey, Pharisees, you experts of the scriptures, don't you remember what King David did? Uh, although he wasn't king at the time. Uh, he ate the sacred bread reserved for the priests when he and his men were hungry. So in referencing David, part of what Jesus is doing here is he's inviting them to make an association between himself and and David, really the Davidic Messiah, the Messiah, the Savior, was supposed to be of the line and lineage of David, uh, a son of David. Um, and so Jesus is making that connection there as well. And what was the circumstances of that story? When he, David, was in need and was hungry, he and those who were with him ate the bread. Notice the context. Again, David and his men were in need and hungry, just like the disciples. There's a need, and it's about food. And so we can surmise that according to Jesus, breaking the rules, violating policy, if you will, is permitted 
in order to meet people's needs. We see in Matthew 12, 5 through 7, Jesus says that even, uh, even the, the, the priests violate the Sabbath because they work on the Sabbath in the temple to meet the people's needs religiously. So they're violating the Sabbath, and let, yet they're not guilty. And um, so he, he gives multiple, well, not multiple references, but he says it's okay to meet people's needs. What you, what you need to understand is mercy, not sacrifice. Great passage, Matthew 12, 5 through 7. So what really pleases God? Offering sacrifices? Um, meticulous rule keeping? No. The great passage for this is Micah 6, 6 through 8. What does the Lord require of you uh, to love? Uh, I can't remember the exact quote. I should have brought my scriptures out. Um, but to love justice or to, have, to live righteously, to love justice, and to walk humbly with your God. That's basically what it is. Look it up. It's a great passage. It's not about rule keeping. It's not about all these meticulous dotting of I's and crossing of T's and, and jumping through hoops to please God. No, it's really boiled down to the two commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. How he, David, entered the house of God in the time of Abiathar the high priest. We're still in verse 26. So the house of God is the tabernacle. It's not the temple. So David entered the tabernacle, and technically it was not Abiathar, it was Ahimelech. But Abiathar was alive at the time, and Ahimelech, he was Ahimelech's successor, and he was the more well-known. And that was common to reference the more well-known priest or leader. There was not chapter and verse back then in the Bible, uh, so it was customary to approximate scripture references according to the most popular king or priests, prophets, whoever. So that's basically what Jesus is doing here. And it was technically within the time of Abiathar, although it was actually Ahimelech who gave them the bread. It was during his time and ate the bread of the presence, which is not lawful for any but the priests to eat, and also gave it to those who were with him. Verse 26. So the Bible reference, if you want to look it up, is 1 Samuel chapter 21, verses 1 through 6. The bread of the presence was made once a week and was laid before the Lord, and then at the end of the week the priests ate the bread, and they were the only ones to eat the bread. So although it was against the rules for David to eat this bread that was reserved for the priests, the scriptures never condemned David for doing so, and the priest allowed it. The, the, they didn't go in and steal the bread, they asked for bread, and the, the priest gave it to them. Uh, like I said, in chapter 12, verse 5 of Matthew, similarly, priests work on the Sabbath to perform their duties, uh, but they're not guiltless, or excuse me, they are guiltless. They're not guilty. And so, Jesus is going to make some conclusions here, some punchlines, if you will. And he said to them, Jesus said to the Pharisees, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. That's punchline number one. So what's really the heart of the Sabbath commandment? The point of the Sabbath was to give mankind a day of rest, uh, rest from physical labor, and a time for spiritual refreshment, a time to connect with God. But over time, the rabbis, scribes, Pharisees, um, over centuries really, had misinterpreted the Sabbath and added to it their own burdensome restrictions. Um, and so we need to remember that God's laws are always for our benefit. When Jesus said that the Sabbath was made for man, it was a law, it was a rule that God gave us, gave uh, the Hebrews, Moses, uh, to give to the people 
so that they didn't have to work nonstop. They had a day of rest, a day of recuperation, uh, and a day where they could spend spiritual time with God and time with their family. That was for their benefit. It wasn't an arbitrary rule just to make God happy. It was for our benefit. Unfortunately, over time, the scribes and Pharisees had put so many other traditions and rules and, and parameters and what it meant to obey the Sabbath that the heart of the Sabbath was lost in it all. So, punchline number two, the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath, one of the most sacred tenets of Judaism. Jesus again refers himself to himself as the authoritative son of man. Daniel 7.14 talks about his authority, that rule and dominion would be given to the son of man. That's Jesus' favorite self-title. Uh, and in Matthew, Jesus claims uh, even greater lordship, even greater than the temple. Someone, Something greater than the temple is here. Who in the world, what in the world could be greater than the temple? The temple that they put so much money and resources and work into many, many years of building. And then, of course, it was um, knocked down by the Babylonians and burned. And then they rebuilt it and they rebuilt it and rebuilt it. The temple was the place for Hebrews to go and, and, and try to get in touch with God. And yet Jesus is saying something greater than the temple is here. And so the, these things, the, the law itself, the Sabbath, the temple, these things are not God. The law was given by God to Moses and then to the people. Jesus elevating himself above the Sabbath and even above the temple was a direct claim of deity. He was God, is God. And John 5, 16 through 8 says that. That is why the scribes, Pharisees, religious authorities hated Jesus enough to kill him. Not only was he violating the Sabbath by ignoring all their meticulous rules, he claimed equality with God. We're going to skip discussion because we had discussion in class. Here's our applications. Jesus is now our Sabbath rest. So we find our rest and refreshment in the person and work of Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 4 talks about him being our, our high priest and, and that we should strive to enter that rest that he won and achieved, achieved for us. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 and 29, Come to me all you who, are lab uh, who labor and are heavy laden, and, and I will give you rest. Uh, put my yoke upon you. Uh, my burden is easy um, and light. Jesus is now our Sabbath rest. We don't, we don't have to have, uh, we don't have to keep the Sabbath. Most, most of us are Gentiles anyway, um, so we don't do anything special, sacred on, on Saturday. Um, but, and although we worship on Sunday because of the resurrected Lord, technically it's, it's never transferred uh, the Sabbath is never transferred in the New Testament from the, the Saturday to Sunday. That's just kind of how we've practically applied it. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's plenty of scriptures that say, uh, you know, some people hold certain days as sacred and others don't. Don't judge the other person. You do what you feel is right with God. Honor God in your heart, but don't judge the other people. Uh, and that's important to remember. If you want to keep the Sabbath... Uh, or make Sunday your Sabbath, that's fine. Just don't judge other people if they don't do it, because our Sabbath is really Jesus. Traditions. Let's talk about traditions for a second. Traditions can be good, but we must always evaluate them by the Word of God. Ultimately, we find our rest and refreshment in the person and work of Jesus Christ. Mark 7, 8 through 13, Jesus condemns the scribes and Pharisees saying, uh, you know, you guys are really good about honoring your traditions and ignoring the law. God gave his people the law, the infallible word of God. It's specific. It's detailed. 
It comes with blessings and cursings, and yet they set that aside and establish their own traditions um, to, to meet, well, originally it was to help people follow God, but it eventually became that they ignored the law, they ignored God, they ignored the heart of the law, and it was just all about meticulous rule keeping, traditions. And in a similar way, we can have traditions. They can be good, they can be bad, they can be neutral, but we must always evaluate them by the word of God. Lastly, Jesus is Lord of all, or he's not Lord at all. We see here that Jesus is Lord of the Sabbath. So is Jesus your Lord? Is he the Lord of your life? Are you seeking to submit to him daily? Acts 2.36, this Jesus whom you crucified is both Lord and Christ. He is Lord. He is Savior and Lord. He's risen from the dead and he is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord. Is he your Lord? So here's our closing prayer for today, right at 21 minutes. Not a bad little recap for you. Heavenly Father, we acknowledge and believe that your Son, Jesus, is Lord of all. We are prone to supplant your perfect word with our traditions and man-made rules. Forgive us when we fall into self-righteousness and rule-keeping. Thank you for salvation by grace through faith in Christ. He is our Sabbath rest. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hope you've enjoyed this time. Hope it's been a challenging uh, study for you and is equipping you and your faith more to follow uh, Christ more, more closely and to reach out to the world who needs the gospel so bad. God bless you till next week.